Good evening. You are so welcome as we gather together here for the 10th evening in the Lenten series of Praying with the Psalms. And tonight we will be reflecting and reading on Psalm 60. So if you, if you have your, your Bible with you, that is, that is good, or if it is handy, please do go and get it. Another option is to tap on the link to Bible Gateway, which you can find along with this video, and this will take you directly to tonight's psalm. So to help us settle into this time together, the candle here will be lit, and if you have one at home, please light it at the same time. So let's begin. We light this candle and we ask that the warmth of this will reassure us through the Holy Spirit of the presence of Jesus in our homes and that the light that breaks through the darkness will give us peace and hope in our lives. And we'll continue to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit by encouraging a sense of stillness within ourselves and by relaxing our shoulders and putting aside any thoughts about what has happened during the day. Breathing slowly in and out. And as it says in the hymn, breathe on us breath of God. Fill us with life anew. So let's us focus on Jesus to be aware of what he wants to say to each of us tonight. Heavenly Father, I welcome you here in my home, in my life, in my heart. And so hand over anything I know that is not pleasing to you and so can then fully return to you and have a clearer vision of what you desire for my life and how I can be a blessing to others, which will be a witness to your love and grace. Amen. So, how are we doing in this time of Lent? Do we feel that we are in a time of wilderness? And the answer, of course, is yes, that in many ways we are in and have been having a wilderness experience. This time last year was the beginning of the upheaval and uncertainty in life, which has affected every single person, a worldwide pandemic, something that has never been experienced in our lifetime. And what have we been experiencing? And the answers to that would be many and varied, and there is no doubt that there has been challenges, difficulties, obstacles, worries, being feeling downhearted, being just plain fed up, weariness, illnesses, family concerns, so much, so much. A mixture of poor days, then better days, and hoping for a return to normality. Yet, what does that mean? How are we coping? Again, the answers to that would be many and varied. Not coping, struggling, making do, looking forward, managing, waiting. A question for, follows all these questions. Where does our help come from? As Christians, we have help resources and we have a helpline. That in no way means that we should always be upbeat on top of the world and coping well with all things in daily life. That is not the truth or the reality of the Christian life. And God knows and understands that very well. His son Jesus did not have a trouble-free life on earth. David did not have a trouble-free life as it is expressed and detailed in the Psalms that he wrote. And before we move into the psalm, there is a piece that is written above the actual psalm, and this is called a superscription, which is a title or a writing over something. 
and it gives an indication as to what the psalm is about. And for this psalm, it is particularly detailed. It mentions the director of music, and he was the person who was in charge of the music in the temple. And this particular psalm was to the tune of the lily of the covenant. And sadly, any of the tunes that are named in the psalms are unknown today as no record was kept of them. A miktam is probably a literary or musical term, not much known about that either. And then interestingly it says, for teaching. So is the teaching for David or is it David teaching us? And I believe it is for both. What troubles we experience in life and how we work through these times is something that we can learn from and then be able to share with others to help them know that it is possible to endure them and weather the storm. And the last part of the superscription describes the battles that are taking place. When David was chosen by God to be the next king after Saul, he had been given a role by God to rescue the people from living in a divided land, to restore stability, and to protect the Israelite nation from their numerous enemies. And these enemies were on, on all sides, which included Aram to the north, Edom to the south, Moab to the east, and Philistra to the west. But God had promised David that he would be victorious in these battles. And now at this time, David was finally king over both Judah and Israel. The divided land had been unified and now battles were being fought to protect the Israelites from harm. And David and his army were at, in the north of the country and they were fighting on two fronts against Aram, one in what is now Syria and one in a part of Iraq. And there was stiff resistance and they were battle weary. And then David heard the news that the Edomites had been victorious in battle in the south. And he cried out to God in verses 1 to 3 because he felt that God had let his people down and they had been abandoned. Where was the promise that God would ensure that their enemies would be defeated? It is as if David was saying to God, was it not enough that they were fighting in two places and then allowing others to come against us at the opposite end of the country? How much is God heaping upon us? Then in verse 5, David shouts out to God, begging him to save the people that he loves and deliver them from defeat. And God answers in verses 6 to 8, from the sanctuary. How good it would be to hear this, the voice of God in the sanctuary, in the worship centre. What a delight that would be. And assures David that their enemies will be defeated and there will be times to celebrate. David, though, still questions God in verses 9 to 10. But then in the verses 11 to 12, David asks God for help, accepting that as humans they cannot achieve resolution to their battles without God's help, and so recognising that with God there will be victory and the enemies will be defeated. And the question that I asked earlier on was, where does our help come from? And the answer is, our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So now just let us read the psalm and as we do, hold on to the thought that God is our help and our rescuer in times of trouble. And after we've read the psalm, we'll pause for silence at the end before we pray together. Psalm 60. You have rejected us, God, 
and burst upon us. You have been angry. Now restore us. You have shaken the land and torn it open, mend its fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from his sanctuary. In triumph, I will parcel out Shechem and measure off the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. On Edom, I toss my sandal. Over Philistia, I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, God, you who have now rejected us and no longer go out with our armies? Give us aid against the enemy, for human help is worthless. With God, we shall gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. Heavenly Father, we thank you for David, who left a legacy of words in which he honestly telling of his struggles, disappointments, fears, worries and anxieties. He admits his flaws and failings and is open enough to tell us that he was at times angry with God and even disappointed in God. But we also can read and learn that David always returned to God and admitted that he desperately needed him and that without God, we are lost and helpless. And we thank you, Lord, that you receive our angry thoughts and words, even our silence with grace and love. You understand that we do go through difficult and trying times and that you never underestimate how we can be suffering. The certainty is that you love us. You keep our promises, you keep your promises and will answer our prayers. Like David's call among the Edomites who had gained a victory but were eventually defeated, may we trust in your timing and give us strength, patience and endurance to wait for the answer to prayer. And we pray for all people who are going through times of stress and strain. May they know your comfort and strength and assurance that there are better days ahead. We pray for those who do not know you as God, who saves and cares, and pray that they will cry out to you for help, that the Holy Spirit will break down any barriers and anything that holds them back from seeking your face. We pray for guidance and clear thinking for all those involved in making decisions for the time of scaling down the restrictions. That you, God, will be a presence in those rooms overseeing those strategy meetings. We thank you for so many people who have been working in so many capacities during this past year to look after our needs, for our food, our electricity, our water, our health, our post for deliveries, for bin collections, for undertakers, for builders, farmers, and many others. Lord, you know them all. May we, in our prayers, continue to remember those who have been listed and bring to our minds those who have not been mentioned and that they will not be forgotten about. In you, Lord, we trust that you will watch over our coming and going, both now and forevermore. 
And we finish, as we say together, the Caleb prayer, which is on the screen. O high King of heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least, and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So thank you for joining us tonight and we look forward to being with you tomorrow night at 7pm. And may Lord Jesus be a bright flame before you, a guiding star above you, a smooth path below you, a kindly shepherd behind you, today, tonight and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>